Hello, everybody. Good morning. Everybody is still more or less asleep, right? It feels a bit like it. Um, so let's see where we can take this. Um, who is already doing a lot of live dashboards? Anybody? OK, so what is everybody using for live dashboarding? Is anybody using Kibana already? OK, a couple, but not everybody. Um, let's see what we can do then. So thanks for the introduction. Um, yeah, I'm working for Elastic, the company behind Kibana and a couple of other projects. Um, so we kind of started off with Elasticsearch, the thing where we store the data, and then we built a lot of ecosystem and tooling around it, basically. Um, maybe you've seen this one. This is very widely used if you have logs or any monitoring and metrics and things like that. And it's like Elasticsearch, Logsash, Kibana, the three original products basically that we had. Um, together they formed the infamous Elk. But it's not only logs and it's not only Elk. And that's kind of the idea of this talk, that we want to go a bit further than just the classical logs because the stack can do a lot of other things. And we want to take a look at that. Uh, a more recent picture of the stack would look something like this. We have added beats, but we have added lots of other components as well. For example, we have tracing now, but there is also security with seam. And there are many other things in this stack, basically. And today I want to be a bit more on the business analytics side. So you have some business data, and you want to live show and dashboard that. That's the general idea. You can run it either on our cloud service, um, or you can use Docker, um, which looks something like this. That would be the minimal Docker example. This is what I'm running for this demo. So this is all you need to do. Um, with that, you can just run that thing here. OK, so enough slides, or let's we'll skip to the slides, back to the slides every now and then. But if you've never seen Kibana, this is Kibana. Um, so I hope that makes more or less sense for you. Um, and so that this is very reproducible for you, what I'm doing is um, we have this sample data set in here. So we have three possible sample data sets, and one is more like uh, business data. We have like an e-commerce shop. We have orders in our e-commerce shop. And that is the one I want to add and will use for dashboarding. So if you want to try out what I'm trying out, you just need to load the sample data, and you have all the data already there for you, and you can just go wild with that, pretty much. And it has added that, and it has added a couple of things in the background as well. But let's quickly, at first, jump into the data set. So you can see, in the last 15 minutes, we had one person buy something from us. That's not a lot of data to dashboard. Um, we'll probably have to switch to a bit of a different time frame. So let's say we're going back like the last 12 days. Um, days ago, this is the one I want. And we can also go like, I don't know, 15 days into the future. Since this is a generated data set, you can look into the future, which is kind of very convenient. Um, but normally you won't be able to do that. But switching to that time frame, you can see this is what we have today. Like The red line is where we are today, and this is the data that we have. So we have around 4,000 or so shopping events in our data set. That's the general idea where we are. And now I can unfold this one, and you can see this is all the data that I have in one specific data set. For example, you see somebody was buying something out of men's clothing and men's shoes. Um, the customer full name was Jackson Fletcher. And you can see, for example, um, where he was from, from California. And you can also see, like for example, how much money did they spend with us? 120, six, seven, whatever dollars is what they spent. And you can see these were the actual products they bought. So you could just have here the total quantity, and this is the kind of data that we have. This is very timeline-based, so you can see every order. This is generally sorted by when an order was placed. This is all the data that we are collecting here. Um, taking a step back again now, so we've seen this. There are two ways to look at your data in general. Um, one is, we call it entity-centric, and the other one is more time series-based. What is the approach that we've looked at so far? Pretty time series-based, because you, you saw in Kibana, when I looked at it, you had like how many items were bought for every single day. What would be an entity-centric approach in comparison to that? It's more, for example, I would the entity that I want to focus on would be, for example, the end user. So I want to aggregate, like I want to have one entity per user, and that contains the entire shopping history for that user. It's not their individual purchases, but it's for one specific user, 
what they have bought overall, so have more focus on the specific person doing something. And this is also something we can easily generate out of this one here. Um, so just to show you, this is the time series based approach that we had so far. But you can basically take the data because these are all the events and now I want to aggregate them together into these entities. How do I get to that? That is one of the more recent things that we have added and we can quickly put that together. So what you have here is it's called transformations or transforms and with transforms you basically can create a job where you out of the individual events that we had over time, we want to aggregate that entity-centric view together. So what I'm doing here is I take that data set that I have, it shows me the individual entries, and you could, for example, see here we have five of the 28 fields. We could switch them around and show others. Um, but what I want to do, for example, is I want to group on the individual buying something. And to keep it simple, I will just assume that the name is a unique key here, which is not true normally, um, but to keep it simple, um, we have, I think we have a name, a field called full name. We'll use that, we'll aggregate based on the full name, and then we want to run some aggregation. What do we want to get out of one individual user? Maybe how much money they spent with us. Um, so we could have, and I'm never sure what the fields are called, I think there is something, um, products, tax amount is not what I want, tax full price, Textless price. Let's go for the textless price. And I want to have the sum of the textless price. And now you can see this is how much money this specific user has spent with us in total. And maybe I also want to add to that, um, I want to have a count um, of the transaction IDs. Um, and I actually don't want to have product ID. All good? Okay. <laughs> um, we want to have a value count of the order IDs, and then you could, for example, see how many times have they been shopping with us. And let's say this is good. I go to the next step. I say, like, this is, let's call that the transformation is the user view. And let's keep this lowercase because it's nicer. Um, and then I can just say this is, we throw this into a so-called user and then we can just look at that user and I also want to run this continuously. So every time, based on the product order, every time a new document comes in with a 60 second delay, we will aggregate that into that specific user again. So we can just start the uh, transformation. Um, it's calculating data for us. And now, rather than having this time series based approach, so this is the one that we had before, the time series based approach, I can now switch to the user. You see the time series is gone because I don't have a good time field anymore. What I have instead is, you can see in here we have the user, how many orders they have placed and how much money they spent with us. So for example, I could make this a bit easier to read, like I toggle this column and I toggle this column. So now we have here, what we see is the customer name and how much money they spent. And then I could check out like, who spent the least money with us? That was Jim Pratt, he only spent $7 with us. Or who spent the most money? That was Vakti and he spent more than $2,000, which is kind of weird because everybody else only spent a couple of hundreds. So maybe this is an outlier. But this is the entity-centric view where we basically continuously aggregate out of individual events. We go to this entity-centric approach to see how, what everybody is doing, which can sometimes be exactly what you want because you don't, you're not really interested in the individual events. You want to have more this entity-centric view, like who is the user spending most money with you? And you just have that in one entity now. So that's one approach, and that's what you can aggregate to get together here. The next thing that you might be interested in is you might want to graph something out of your shop to see what people are actually doing here. So to create a very simple visualization, let's go for a, a line chart because it's one of the simplest one. And I take the original data set that we've added here, and by default, it gives me a count of all the transactions that I had in that time frame. So you can see from 12 days ago to 15 days into the future, we have 4,000 shopping events. That is not really very helpful. So I want to show on the, on the x-axis, for example, 
I want to have the x-axis and I want to make this a date histogram. So first off now, we see the individual transactions per day. How many transactions did we have per day? So this is a simple count. And then, besides the amount of items bought or transactions, we could also say, I want to have a different aggregation here. For example, I could say, I want the sum, and let's go for that tax less total price. Let's aggregate that again. And now you can see, on the one axis here, we see how many items did people buy that's like 70 to 80 or so. You can also see like how much money did they spend in our shop every day, which that might be a nice graphic that you want to put on a dashboard somewhere around the folks selling stuff so they know like, okay, people are buying stuff or they're not buying stuff and we're in trouble. Um, one thing that is maybe a bit annoying in this view here is that here we have the same axis for both. And this is very small, and you cannot really correlate how is one doing in comparison to the other. What you could do, for example, is under metrics and axis, um, you can say that this one here, um, I want to go have this on a new axis, and this is going to the right-hand side now, and now you have them kind of like side by side. And you can also see like how do the number of orders and the total money spent with us correlate. So this shows you basically how is your shop doing right now. And we can, by the way, rather than calling um, this count here, um, we can call this items sold. And we'll call the other one, let's call it money made. And this is what you have here. And um, you can, by the way, if you say like we want to have this in red, you can just simply switch the color here. Um, and this is the very first visualization that you could build. And you can see from a business perspective, this is showing you kind of like some of the most interesting things already in your data. Um, let's save this one and say, um, I'll call this custom uh, line. We'll get back to the custom line chart. Um, another thing that you sometimes want to see, for example, is you would want to figure out like who are your biggest spenders? What might be one visualization how to figure out your biggest spender? Um, it could be the infamous tag cloud. So for example, we take our data set here again. Um, right now it aggregates everything together and we can see all is here. And now I want to bucket that. And first off, I don't want to have only a count. I want to have the buckets. And here I go for a specific term. And the term I'm interested in is the full name. What you have now is, these are the people who did most transactions, and these are only the top five people who did the top transactions. Let's switch that to 25. These are the top 25 people with, are based on the number of transactions. But maybe you're not interested in the number of transactions. You might be more interested in how much money they spend. And then you can switch this one around here from count to a sum. And again, you can just, um, what did we have? The tax less total price, if I run this one here. Now you basically see who is spending most money, and maybe 25 is too much. Let's reduce that to 20. Okay, looks kind of decent. You can see who is spending how much money with you, and maybe you want to send special love to those customers to tell them, well, we like you, please spend more money with us, um, just to figure out like who are your top spenders. And obviously, this can always be selected per time frame. Like if I change the time picker here, I could see like who spent most money with me yesterday, for example, or the last week or whatever time frame you have. So this is, should be very interactive as well. What we can then now do is we can save this again. I call this custom tags. The final thing that we might want to add, like just to do a third visualization is, I want to see the average price per item that people spent with us. So we can see does our average price go up or down? And maybe you change something in your data set and then your price is changing over time. Um, so what we do for that one here is we create yet another visualization. If you've not seen this one, it's called TSVB. It's called Visual Builder. This one is a bit more advanced in terms of you can click together a visualization and even do calculations and aggregations in it in a very visual way. I'll show you how that one works and aligns together. So by default, it shows you the number of transactions again over time. But that is not what we want. Um, I want to have an, a view of, let's call it, average price that we want to have here. 
How do we calculate the average price? Probably we need to have that count to know how many items people buy, and then we aggregate the price together or sum up the prices of that time frame to see how much money they spend. So we have a count. This is what we need. In addition to the count, we also want to have a sum. And in the sum, I have the textless total price, for example. Now it's just showing you the textless total price. And now I need to combine the two. To combine the two, you add another step here. Basically, this is all just one step followed by another step followed by the next step. What I want to do here, for example, is I have a mathematical formula. And this is a bit tricky, but follow along. Um, I basically say, like, I have a count, and I give it the variable name count. And I have a sum of total price, and I'll give it the variable name price. And what you can then do is you can reference those variables, params dot price divided by params dot count. So this params dot count basically references this variable here that falls back to the count that we've defined up here. And params price is the same thing, the sum of Texas price in a price variable. And we have that price variable, this one here, basically. So this is what we have then here. And this should give me some data. Let's see. Unless I did something wrong. And I must have done something wrong. Um, what did we get? We have the count of the items. We have the sum of the textless price. Um, let me see. Do we have a better field product price? Let's try this one. Mm. Okay, somewhere, somewhere I have, I'm in the right data set, that's good. Order data is also the field we want, so we want to have this based on the order field. Um, that's the one I want. We have the average price, params.price, let me take this one out again. Okay, this is the price that we have in the last 24 hours, this is what we want. And we want to have that divided by params dot count. Uh, it doesn't like me for some reason right now. Okay, let's go just with params dot price for now. It doesn't really matter. So we we see how much people bought in that time frame. So that should still be correct. Um, Let's take this one and save it as well. So we've saved all of those. Um, the three visualizations that we have. Uh, what you then normally want to do is you want to kind of combine them because you want to have a bit more of a general overview. And for that, we have dashboards. So yeah, there are some dashboards that we have prepared. So with this sample data set, you have some dashboards that you can just get and you can see these are the prepared ones, but we can also just look at the ones that we have created ourselves now. Um, so for example, what we can do here is we just create a new one. And in this one here, you can just add the custom visualizations that we've added. So that's why I've kind of always put custom in front of them. So I can just click all three and it will add those. And now we could, for example, say like, I want to have this here on top, and you can see how prices are developing. And um, then you can see this one here with the average price. We could have that in comparison below it. And then we can, I don't know, keep that one in the middle here. And then you could just say like, oh, this is nice. This is the dashboard I want to show on some big TV screens. And we see how much over this time frame are our sales developing. Like, for example, in the last seven days, these are the curves that we have here. So this is nice. What you can, by the way, also do is from on this visualization here, for example, you could annotate it. So that's another thing that sometimes is not super obvious how to get there is here. You can say, I want to edit this actual visualization again. You can see this is how it's going. And then you have, for example, under annotations, you could add an annotation. So the annotation that you might want to add is, or let's take a step back. What do I mean with annotation? Annotation is, for example, you have a sales event. 
like you have some, you start the fall sale or the spring sale now, whatever. And then you can just annotate that in your graph and then you can say suddenly, oh, my average price decreased, but the number of total sales increased afterwards because we changed the price point. Um, what you want to add into this one, and I'll quickly cheat and copy the right document because you don't want to see me type that in. What we want to do here is, I'm adding a raw document. So these are the raw documents that you can annotate. This could be, for example, here, I'm saying, um, we say, on the 12th of November, we start the fall sale. If that is really the thing that we want to do here is, doesn't really matter. So we have that fall sale as an event that we have added. And what you can then do in this visualization here, you can say we want to take this out of the events index. So this is what we have just created. We've just created this annotation event, the events, um, based on that timestamp. And then I want to have this tag, and basically the field that I'm interested in is the description. And then I can just use description here, and use the description field here. And then if you have the, I don't know, let's say, two days from now, and 10 days in the past, here, for example, we started the fall sale, and then you can see how the, the sale changed over time. Obviously, it didn't change in my example because we, we just set the tag here, but this is how you can um, update your graphics. We confirm and overwrite this one. If I go back to the dashboard, and you have the right time frame, for example, here, you could have this annotation then, and you could say here, okay, this is when we started the sale, and then, for example, I want to zoom in how did sales just change right after we started this sale. And you can see all of this is connected and interactive. So if I zoom in here, the tag cloud here adapts to that, and this chart up there also kind of changes according to that one. Um, so that is where we want to head with that one. Um, one other thing that we recently improved a bit was maps. This one I'm not clicking together, I'm just relying on the sample data that we have in that one here. This one, for example, shows you based on specific regions where you are. Um, and the actual map material is only available when you're online. So let me quickly do that here. So the data is in your instance, but the map in the background, that's actually all just OpenStreetMap. That's what we normally fetch when we refresh that dashboard. So now that we're online, we can also see the countries. Um, so you can see basically, this is the UK. This is where we had some sales in the UK. And then you can, for example, see like how much did we sell in this place? So we had 130 sales events and we sold $9,500 or so in the last seven days in this specific region. Um, and this here, the sales revenue is just to show you, this is just falling back on the sample data set that we have. I have the GOIP location, so basically I know where somebody is coming from, and I just show this as a point here, and then you have the total sales. We have, once you zoomed in enough, you can see the point. You can see, okay, we want to have this course grain, and we just have the count of the sales events. And then we have a sum of the sales event on text full total price as well. And this is where all of this data here is coming from, and how you, how you see how much you sold in the UK in the last yeah, seven days, or in Morocco, for example. So these aggregations are here and easy to use. Okay, with 10 minutes left and probably a couple for questions, let's finally come to Canvas. Has anybody used Canvas before? Has anybody seen Canvas? So the idea of Canvas is maybe you have this problem that you have this report that you need to generate every now and then, and then you have some charts or whatever, and you take a screenshot, and then you put them into your own PowerPoint. So it is kind of like part of a nice presentation. And it's kind of as you do this every month because you have the monthly presentation on some sales numbers. And the kind of idea is what we want to solve with Canvas is that we want to basically give you the chance to skip the copying stuff to PowerPoint. 
that's the general idea here. It is, your canvas is pretty much this white space that you have here, just to show what this looks like. This one here is this, and this is just, you have a space and you can just arrange stuff any way you see fit. For example, um, here um, you can see the total sales. Um, this is a metric number, the value of the sum of this price, and this is backed by this query. Now you might be confused, where is SQL coming from suddenly? Because we're using still Elasticsearch, which didn't speak SQL for a long time, but we have a SQL read-only interface. So since a lot of people are used to SQL, you can back all of these charts with, charts with SQL now. So for example, what I'm doing here is, over the total lifetime of this entire chart, we select the sum of the Texas total price as sum total price from our index, and then we just say like, okay, this is a value, and this is the total price, and then you can format it. Like you can see here, the number formatting, um, you could then just say like, um, yeah, this is a currency, and we just abbreviate 350K with a K at the end, and we have the dollar sign before, and you could, for example, change the font size, um, how you align it, etc. And any one of these elements is live data and driven by our data set in the background. And you can also say like, for example, this so should refresh every 15 seconds. Um, so you could just say like, this will refresh every 15 seconds. Um, and then whatever happens in the background in your live data set, these charts will always be fresh. And you'd never have to copy out kind of like a screenshot from Excel or whatever BI tool you have into PowerPoint to present like that. But you can just do it like here. And you can have multiple pages as well. And you can just style it any way you want. So you can totally bring that to your own corporate identity and then just show how these work. Um, to give you an idea how to create a new one, um, this is sometimes a bit tricky. I admit that Canvas is um, its very powerful, but it's sometimes a bit challenging to use. So for example, here um, you can say, okay, we want to have this in light green, like this is our background color as a company. And then for example, we want to add the logo of our company. And to keep it simple, like the one logo that we have built in is our company logo. So I'll just keep this one here. So this is, for example, the logo that you want to have. And then you can just add any other elements that you see fit um, that you might want to have. So for example, to keep it simple, we can just add a line chart here. By default, any data set that we have in here um, is backed by a custom demo data set. But you can just switch that to a different one. So you could either target raw Elasticsearch documents, or you could just do an SQL query again. So right now, I'm doing all the data from the Kibana sample data set. Who likes SQL? Good. How do we get back to the, how, how much we sold over time? Um, probably we want to have something like sum, and then depending on what field you have, and I always forget my field names, let me quickly check in the field names. So which one does make most sense? We could, for example, say textless total price. Let's take this field here. Bless you. Uh, we take sum of the textless total price as total price. We can save this one. And then in the display, um, you want to say that that one here um, is actually a date. And the y-axis, that is then the value of the total price that we had. And the x-axis is wherever my date picker is. Um, but first, probably, we need to add a date picker anyway. So what you can also say here, because so far we haven't picked the date yet, what you want to have here is you want to set a time filter, for example, where you can say this one here, and this is then interactive as well, um, was just the last 24 hours of time. And I actually want to have that on the order date. And then you can just fix that down to a specific time frame of that order date. And that's how you can build totally independent dashboards of that just look exactly how your company logo looks and with the data that you want to have in here. 
And with that, I think we're getting pretty close on time. So to kind of wrap up, what we have here is what you can do in Kibana and also Elasticsearch is more than just logs. It's more than just uh, full text search. It's very much on the I have some business data and I want to visualize that business data and correlate it maybe with my log events, for example. That is possible. Um, we've covered on that entity-centric versus timeline view. The timeline view is always nice if you want to have like, this is what happened over time. The entity is like, who are my top spenders, for example, and you can just extract those. And um, then you have various visualizations that I've shown, including Canvas, where you can customize exactly the way you want to see data for your use case. And that's pretty much it. And I think we have like four or five minutes left. Um, any questions or anything else you want to see? <laughs> yes, Shh. do we have a microphone? Yes. Um, hello. I would like for you to go over again for in the transformation part. Mm -hmm. Can you create kind of a new data set called user? Yes. Is that something that you can reuse later, might not be an elastic search, or is something, is a, is a process running? I didn't have the full grip on, on what So you what did. you have here, um, and you can see, this is the job that is running continuously. So what this basically is doing, and I want to say this one here, you can actually see, this is the, Let's go to the JSON. This is kind of the, what is really happening. The UI is only showing you part of what, it, what you're doing. You're taking this index here. You take all the documents out of that index, and you put it into a new index called user. And that is basically you run some aggregation, and you aggregate from one index into this other index. So then here you can see this is what we aggregate on. We aggregate on the customer full name. And we then extract these two metrics. And what you do here is, let me show you the raw documents. If you go to get user um, search, oops. So this is one of those documents. So you basically go from get, what is my original index called? Kibana sample data e-commerce, this one here. So you have the individual sales events, and from those, you go to this entity-centric view where you just, for this, this specific user, this is whatever they have done in the past. So you create a new index with new documents, and then you can build on top of those. And if you configure it or enable it, this will be continuously updated. So every 60 seconds, basically, it's a bit like a batch job. Every 60 seconds, we look like what new transactions came in, update all the, the documents that we have aggregated, and run and update those. And we'll continuously keep doing that for you. In Elastic, not yes. in Kibana. Okay. Well, so well, you can configure, thing. like Kibana is just a fancy UI tool. Um, all the hard work is basically done in Elasticsearch always. So Elasticsearch is running the aggregation. Kibana is just to configure the job and then show you the results. But yeah, this here, this, this is basically the Elasticsearch side when I go to the raw queries, um, just to show you what is really happening in the background of those. Sure. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Uh, does Elastic uh, have joins? Can you do a join between two indexes? So um, that's actually a, a good question because this is, so the general answer is there are no joins because any distributed system like distributed joins are not something that is working well. But what is kind of a slight workaround, maybe you've seen something that is called join in the maps thing that I've shown you because there basically this is an application side join. So we don't have a join in Elasticsearch, but of course your application, and in my example, Kibana is the application basically. Kibana can basically fetch some data and then fetch some more data based on that, but it's more like an application side join. It's not in the data store that it's doing a proper join. Because kind of like the requirement that we have is if it works on one node, that's fine, but it also has to work on 100 nodes. And while we could make a join work on one node, distributed join over 100 nodes is probably not what people expect in terms of response times. So that's why we don't have those. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? By the way, if you want stickers, I've thrown the stickers there. If you want to take stickers, take stickers. Um, final question, otherwise, thanks a lot. If you have more questions, just come to me and find me. Thank you.